Hello everybody, this is Lucy Coleman here and thank you for coming back to my channel. And as many of you know, if you follow me on my social media, I've been making a few changes in my life again because I just moved back from Saudi Arabia to the US and it has been a huge transition and uh, we have been going through a lot of changes in the last weeks and I would like to share with you some of these things in a few other videos. However, today uh, this is a video dedicated to some of my fellow friends or fellow females that are very interested to know how it was for me to live in a country such as Saudi Arabia that not many people get to visit unfortunately. And I have a few tips for you if you would like to know them because if you are going to become an expat in the future or are planning to move to that area of the world which is like uh, Middle East there are a few things that are important for you to know ahead and so I'm gonna let you know all right two years ago uh, me and my husband decided to move to Saudi Arabia with our at the time one year old son and um, it was a huge change because we were living in the US for a long time and I was previously living in in England for a long time too and it was a huge change because I never lived in a country in the Middle East I visited some countries in the Middle East but I never got to live there and uh, I, I didn't know what to expect, I didn't know what to do. And even though when I was doing some research about the place, you don't really get enough, enough information that you feel like you are completely um, fine with all the things that you're reading. Because it's one thing when you read information and uh, different perspectives from the different people. And another thing is when you live the experience. And uh, trust me, it's a whole experience. When we got there, it was uh, very interesting to me because uh, when we got to the airport, the Saudi airport is not like that amazing airport that you, you might imagine that is an airport like the one in Dubai, that is a huge airport with so many facilities and things. Um, it's, a, it's a very small airport and I was surprised because they received so many million Muslims every year to you know, during the year to visit that sacred city named Mecca and I was expecting something huge, something more advanced, uh, more technologic and it wasn't. It's a very basic airport. Um, you can stay at the airport on the normal lunch area or you can pay extra and go to the um, like a, a facility that you are like in a lunch place uh, VIP and then you get more um, space and it's, it's a little bit quieter than it is outside. Outside it is a bit noisy and it's very complicated to when you're gonna travel and you're tired uh, it's complicated to get used to you know the whole situation going on there. Also the toilets uh, and I have to tell you this the toilets um, in most places in Saudi or are like very very basic toilets uh, and I mean the ones that you don't get um, the toilet per se you don't get to sit there you have like a hole <laughs> in the toilet and then you have a sink where you can wash your hands so you can wash yourself or something it was interesting to see that uh, you get the normal toilets or the western toilets um, if you pay more in the VIP launch or if you go to the new malls uh, that have those facilities. But when I got there, um, I, we went to this place called Al Bala that is very traditional uh, and because we went to Jeddah and uh, it was beautiful, very, very, uh, very ancient city, but you can't find toilets like the ones we have in, in the West. So forget about that. And if, you, if you're if you not gonna get used to the idea of using that type of toilet, I recommend you <laughs> try to hold yourself and wait until you get a proper toilet. That's one of the things that struck, struck me the most when I got there. And it was really funny because I, I'm very open-minded and I'm very adaptable, but it was interesting to find that out. Um, 
when I got there, uh, my husband was already there, so he took um, all the businesses of uh, getting a car, um, buying all the things that he needed to buy for the baby and for all the things that we, needed, we, we were gonna need. And it was easier for me to adapt because you really need a car there. Um, some people go there and they decide they're not gonna, they're not gonna get a car. Uh, but it depends on when you're gonna leave or where you're going. Uh, it is, uh, I recommend you to get a car. You need a car. So these like big cars. They like to go out in huge cars. They use like these SUVs and four by four cars because um, they also like to go outside and they, they like to go outdoors to, to the desert. Um, but we got a basic a small car because we knew we were gonna be there just for a few years. So it was gonna be maybe maximum three years. And we knew we, it, we needed to get something that it was easier for us to sell. You can buy a car as an expat there. You can um, uh, easily go to a dealer and just buy a brand new car, or you can use a you can buy a used car, and it's easy to buy a car there. It's just gonna take a bit longer than um, than you used to, if you, especially if you live in the U.S. where things are very quick, but it's done easily and you can just go for it and if you have an stable job and of course to visit that country you need an ikama and you need to have permission to stay there because they at the time they they were not issuing any uh tourist visas now they're a bit more open with uh tourists coming to the country but at the time when i went there they were not issuing any of that so you need something called ikama which is the id card and once you get that ikama you can do most things that you need to do like opening an account uh, getting a phone because your phone and everything there is linked to your ikama and to your phone number also uh, so everything they have a system where they're gonna know everything about you all the things you own all the things you do through your phone number and your ikama number so that's something that is important and is equal for men and women so you need an ikama to live there in saudi once you enter the country and you find out about the airport and all that you will see a huge huge city depending on where you go i didn't go to Riyadh. i went i was living near jeddah and jeddah is a huge city i was amazed by how big that city is it's a beautiful beautiful huge city they have so many things over there um i just got there and i was amazed by seeing wow all this uh, of course you you're gonna see some different things like uh the culture is a lot different <laughs> because they 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 have the dress code and I was told that I needed to wear the abaya, which is the long dress uh, at the airport, but I wasn't compelled to use, to cover my hair or to use a hijab or anything, or the burqa, anything, if I didn't want to. So I, I wasn't covering my head and I didn't feel, well, uh, and I'm talking for myself, but I didn't feel people looking at me in a different way. And even though I was I was coming across many people that seemed to be very conservative with the way they were dressing, um, they were uh, like people that are used to see tourists and people from the West. And I was having my long hair. I, I usually wear like this and, you know, I didn't have any problems. So nobody was saying anything bad to me. I was also told that ladies, when they get to the airport, if they don't have an abaya, that's fine until you get to the car, but you can't just go without an abaya um, in public places apart from the airport. So the airport is fine if you don't have an abaya, they will let you in and they will let you go outside until you get to the car. But once you get there, you need to find your, your, you know, your abaya and you need to wear it because it's, uh, it's mandatory. I know the government is making things easier now for women and trying to um, uh, relax a little bit more about that law, but it's still, it's still you know, mandatory that you need to cover yourself uh, or your body with something. Um, and there are many abayas, beautiful ones. I had two abayas when I went there. I, I bought them online and I bought another abaya over there because they are very fashionable and I really like to wear them. But that was me. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about me. I know some of my friends might say, oh, 
you're crazy because you know I they, they used to complain a lot because it was hot and they used they needed to wear the abaya but I was fine with it I had no problems um, the other thing that when I got there, there was this, uh, there were many changes when I went there because uh, I was very lucky. I think I was, I went there in the, in the right moment and, and it was the right time for me to see all these changes from how it used to be and how it is now. Because uh, the, the Saudi that I visited when I, when I went there two years ago is completely different than the one that is now. Uh, at the moment, women were not allowed to drive. And I could drive inside the complex where we were living because it was a compound. Uh, it is located about 40 minutes from Jeddah. And it is a huge compound. It is like living in a city and you have shopping malls, you have supermarkets, you have many facilities and schools. So you, you feel like living in a small town and it was fine for me, but we used to go outside a lot so you can leave the compound and just go to Jeddah or go to other towns nearby and visit the towns and explore, which was something that we used to do every weekend. We loved to explore. And I was wearing my abaya outside, but inside the complex, you're not um, obligated to wear the abaya. It was fine as long as you dress accordingly, not, not like wearing shorts or something that it shows your, you know, your bra or your arms too much and it was fine because I you can wear dresses and skirts and you know not very short skirts but it was fine I didn't feel like I was uh, doing something completely opposite that I used to do before because I'm not a person that likes to dress um, with short things or uh, you know things that are showing my arms too much and I, it was fine for me, so I could actually wear all the clothes I took there. I was wearing wearing all my clothes. The weather, <clears throat> I, I was also surprised because when I got there, it was December and uh, the weather was amazing. It was so fresh, it was so nice and it was like that until maybe April, May. It was really fresh. I could go outside. I didn't feel, you know, very, very, uh, the sun being so strong. I didn't feel like uh, my skin was getting damaged or anything with the sun. It was really nice. And we could go to the desert and see the sunset and some sunrises. And I didn't feel heat at all. It was really nice. It was very fresh. Uh, during the summer, yeah, it gets really hot. <laughs> Not like crazy hot, but yeah, it gets hot. I went to Kuwait in one of the trips that we made over there, and Kuwait was crazy. It was it was the craziest ever. You know, I never felt so hot in my life. It was really hot, but there in Saudi, the 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 climate was nice. It was really good, and I, I you know even in the summer I could go and do things outside with my friends. I had no problems with that. So I didn't find the weather to be a big issue over there. Um, not even for my son. He, he, he's not very much into heat. He doesn't like the hot weather too much, but he was fine. He used to go out with me every single day and in the afternoons going to parks and going to nice places and he was fine. Uh, they are surrounded by beaches. You know, Saudi is a country that has lots of beaches. It has, um, it is by the Red Sea. And we were fortunate to be in a compound that was by the sea, actually by the sea. You can just walk to the ocean. And we used to swim almost every day. It was beautiful, beautiful over there. The Red Sea is also really warm and nice. During winter, it's a bit colder but it's really nice uh, during the summer and it's really refreshing too because of the hot weather. The Red Sea is beautiful. I recommend you, if you can do some snorkeling, it's amazing. You're gonna see amazing, amazing um, fishes and, 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 and plants over there. It's, it's so nice. It's really interesting to, to do a snorkeling. We took some classes for sailing and we enjoyed that a lot. We were getting these sailing classes to learn how to do it and and it was something that we we never thought we were gonna do and we went for it because we could <laughs> it was nice and i recommend you to do something like that if you ever go to the middle east because it's really interesting to do it 
Um, so uh, I was going to tell you about the changes and, and one of the big changes that happened when I was over there, it was the, uh, that women were allowed to drive. And I was so excited when I heard the news and when I, I, I knew there were news around from, since last year, but I wasn't sure because, you know, you, you can hear the news, but you, you're not sure if it's really going to happen because I was excited just to, I was always driving inside the campground, but I, it was like this excitement to go outside and, and do it by myself because I had to wait for my husband to finish work or to, for the weekends when he was uh, off to take me outside and go to Jeddah or go to any other city. But this time we were told that we could drive. Oh my God. And I got the license. So I got a driving license and I was so excited. I was really, really, really excited because um, uh, it was something historic. And for the first time, women are allowed to drive there. And I was just going outside. I was going every weekend. I was going to Jetta. I was so excited. And I, I started seeing these women doing the same and driving these huge cars and driving very nice cars, sporty cars. And it was so nice to see that because the country was so open to that. And, you know, I, I felt like people were like used to that. I, th I never saw any anything weird or anybody seeing people differently because they were driving or I was a woman, a lady driving. It was nice. And I was even taking my son to the hospital sometimes by myself during the week. And... It was fine. They were helping me for, you know, to park the car and they were really gentle and, and nice and respectful. Uh, there was no difference. I didn't feel it, but I, I, I can, I need to repeat this. This was my case, my personal case. And I know some cases are different, but that was my case. Another thing uh, that you're going to find in Saudi and it's interesting is that the working days are from Sunday to Thursday. So the weekend is usually uh, is actually Friday and Saturday. That was uh, that was another change because you know you get used to your Sundays off, but no, here you work on Sundays. Um, and it was fine because you just get the dynamics of the family and the schools, you get the things that changes uh, that are going to happen between everything, you know, your week is going to happen between Sunday to Thursday. And that was fine. We just got used to that too. That was really interesting too. Um, some of the things that I saw and that I learned there was that female uh, usually need a male guardian to do anything. If they're going to get any uh, government issued documents or if they decide to study or if they want to go out of the country, they need permission uh, of the male guardian. They have that figure and some families are very flexible and they allow their females to go anywhere they want and even to drive to do whatever they want to do because they're very open-minded but some of them are quite conservative and they still you know have that figure that the male guardian has to approve anything they do and the male guardian is usually a father or a son or a brother and i have some friends that were so this and they were telling me about that but they didn't feel you know that it was a big issue because they're used to that um, something also interesting about them was that I was asking them how do they feel about the fact they have to cover up uh, themselves so much and I mean some occasions it's like extreme because they can't even show the eyes and they told me they felt fine you know they feel that is something that they believe in they've been brought up in in that culture and they feel it's, it's okay for them it's not something like uh, they feel they are obligated to do and they are doing it against their own will. That's not what I got from them. And I know some cases are like that and they are obligated to do things. But in the cases that I was talking to my friends, it didn't happen and they feel fine with that. Uh, another thing that I they, they told me is that domestic violence is underreported. They don't report these cases too much because I feel they feel sorry that maybe women don't get that support that they use they should uh but the law is changing and i know that because um i have friends that were working with that and in that environment and they told me things are changing now because saudi is opening more to the world they 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 want to 
change uh, some of the views that the world has about them. And that's really good. <clears throat> um, I, I also noted, and I, I'm looking here because I, I made some notes for you so I, can't, I don't miss anything because uh, this is really, really interesting to know. Um, I, I saw many Philippines, people from the Philippines working there. You're going to find lots of people from the Philippines working there. They are really nice people. They are respectful. They speak English very well. And that was another thing. Um, everybody speaks English there. Uh, even in, in, in this is, uh, these poor areas where we were going because sometimes we needed to fix something for the car and we were going to Jada to these very poor areas and they, they seem very conservative and they could speak English fine. They understood everything we were saying and they were very respectful to what we needed and it was fixed, it was done. Um, so yeah, they speak English and you're going to find lots of people from the Philippines, they travel over there to work. You're going to find nannies and people working in restaurants and as waiters and in supermarkets. And I made some very nice friends in the supermarket in Kaos uh, and it's called Tamimi supermarket. And I really miss them because they, they were they were these type of guys that used to smile so much every single day. And I was seeing them every day because the supermarket was just five minutes away from my house. And it was really good. In the supermarkets, you're gonna find anything. Anything you need, they import anything. They import things from many countries and I didn't feel I needed anything or when something was scarce, they, I could find it in some other supermarket. So I found anything and I'm very into the organic session, sections and I was always finding everything I needed in the organic section with no problems. And you find uh, very nice fruits and vegetables and you also have these farmer markets uh, that you can buy things in local local things like for example honey i was obsessed by the honey i was getting there it's an amazing honey it's not cheap but it comes directly from the farmers and the people that are raising you know that are looking after the bees and the the you know the honey the quality was amazing and i haven't even found yet a honey so good here in the states but i still you know I just got here a few weeks ago, so, but it's, you know, it's really nice honey. The food over there is really good. Uh, the local food is very good. You're going to find, it's very sanitary. I didn't find uh, they are, um, you know, they are dirty in the way they prepare food. If you're going to eat anything outside or on the street, so you, it's, it's really good. Uh, the food is nice. They have these very nice kebabs and the all this Arabic food that you usually get anywhere and they have it and we were obsessed uh, with a with the Gemini food too because they have Yemen just you know very close and they have lots of influence and in, in rest restaurants from Yemen and we had this amazing breakfast every month <laughs> because it's very filling and it's, it's, it's full fat but it's so good and the bread was really nice in the area where we were there is a there there's possibility to find very good fish and the famous fish in that area is called hamur and the hamur um they the, the local fishermen they bring the hamur every morning and you can just get it in uh, I was getting it in a town called Tuwal and I was going to that town getting fresh fish and you can prepare it yourself or you can ask them to to fry it or to or to bake it for you um, and it's really really nice because it's a fresh fish you can get octopus you can get very very nice seafood over there and it's fresh uh, it, it, and I have to mention that it depends on the area of Saudi where you live in, but because we live, we were living in that in the coast, it was easier for us to find it. Um, let me see what else. Oh, they the, the, when I got there, the day I got there, I I realized they had they like to make picnics, and the picnics they make, they make them 
in the sand. <laughs> so they go to the sand and they go to the desert and they make picnics there. And you're gonna find some very sophisticated picnics because they bring the whole kitchen, like the whole kitchen. They made a tent with many chairs and tables and they sit there, the whole family, and they have a nice picnic. Even when it's hot outside sometimes, they do it. They like to do it and they pray there. Um, the praying times happen usually four or five times every day, that's daily. You're gonna hear it if you live near a mosque or if you're going through a mosque. They have the praying times, it's beautiful. They sing the prayings uh, through a huge microphone and you can hear them. And they usually pray, you know, depending on the direction they have to do that day. And um, they do it, yeah, five times a day, and it lasts for about between 20 to 30 minutes. And every time they pray, they close everything. So you, you won't find any store or any supermarket or anything's gonna be open at that time. And if you go to a restaurant and it, it is about the praying time, they can let you in. But once you get in, you can't get out until the praying is finished. Or if you get to the restaurant while there is a praying time, you need to wait because it's closed. It's gonna be closed. Everything closes during praying time, and you just you can just download an app and you know track the the times of the prayings and and see what times they do it, so you can organize yourself and your time accordingly. Uh, Another thing, let me see, the, the praying, the shopping malls have everything that you need. They have huge shopping malls and you're gonna find anything, anything, clothes, whatever. Clothes, I find it to be more expensive there than in other places. Even uh, labels that tend to be very, quite, you know, cheaper in the US, they're gonna be a bit expensive in, in Saudi. And if you're gonna need anything, so try to, organized because you you're gonna need you know some things or buy some things and they might get a little bit expensive and you might get surprised because you know you can pay a lot less for that for the same item somewhere else but yeah things used to be a little bit more expensive for a, for a lady if you go to a shopping mall and you like something and you want to try it on they don't have fitting rooms uh, what you have to do is buy the garment or whatever you want and take it to the toilet, to the ladies' toilet, try them, and, and if you like it, uh, you can take it or you have to bring it back to the store and they will refund you for the item. Uh, but there are no fitting rooms. And if you want to take it home because you you rather change home or try it on home, you have three days usually to to exchange or get a return. So um, try to coordinate with that because it's not like in the US. <laughs> it's completely different. Uh, the currency there is, uh, is in SARS and it's about um, 3.7 SARS per dollar. So the dollar is stronger over, over here. Um, the, uh, the health system, I found it to be really good. They have a good health system, even though I know some people have many complaints about the health system. I think it's really good and it works really good over there because I had a few issues and I needed uh, to go to the doctors uh, with my son too. And it was fine. I found it to be, you know, fine. I, I never felt the need to find a second opinion elsewhere or outside Saudi. And I really, I was pleased with the uh, health system and that my opinion again um, another thing is that oh yeah it's a very safe country wherever you go you're gonna feel safe uh, some ladies have reported in the complex where I, I was living that when they got to the airport and needed a, to take an uber or a taxi if they were by themselves they had some issues with the drivers if they were alone because I was never by myself at the airport or I never needed to take a taxi I I, I don't know the about the experiences um, but yeah I know that some ladies uh, were recommending to find a partner or somebody to travel with or to um, try to get somebody to to, to pick you up from the airport, try not to be by yourself with any driver because any issue may happen. I never had that uh, because I didn't need to, but you know, in case you need to go by yourself, but 
be careful with that. But apart from that, <clears throat> it is a very safe country. You can just go outside uh, at any time of the night and, and it will be safe. Um, I remember once I left my wallet somewhere and I found it at the same place and nothing happened. Uh, you're gonna find it that it's a really, really safe country. Um, uh, the the alcohol consumption is forbidden in the same of, uh, as uh, eating pork. Those two things are completely forbidden and of course drugs uh, is forbidden too. So you can't enter with any alcohol uh, into the country or any, any products or any food that contains pork. Uh, you can be deported and you can get in trouble. As Muslim, I'm not Muslim, but um, if you are Muslim and you want to visit the city of Mecca, uh, uh, many people told me it's, it is amazing, and I'm sure it is. It must be beautiful. Um, you have to be Muslim to go there to visit Mecca or Medina. Those are uh, sacred cities. We travel to uh, several other cities and discover many things, but we never got the chance to see those sacred cities because you have to be Muslim in order to to enter them. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful country. It has m many things to offer. And if you are going over there, I tell you to prepare yourself for a complete different experience. Try to be open-minded. Try to forget about the things that you know of your own country because it's a complete different culture. And uh, my husband and I, we're very open-minded with uh, understanding how people live in different parts of the world and we like to travel a lot and, and we're trying to teach that to our son to understand and to respect different cultures and to respect that, they, that people can be very diverse. And if you are very open-minded and if you let them teach you what they know and what they can offer. I'm sure you're gonna have a great experience as we did, and you're gonna come back with uh, lots to say like me that now this video is so long. <laughs> and I'm sorry for that, but I, I had so much to share with you and I want you to, to, to know that uh, as a lady, as a woman, uh, over 40 years old also, because I moved there when I was 40 and, uh, for me, it was an amazing experience. It's one of the best ones that I have ever had. And um, I might share a few more things and tips with you. And if you have anything else you would like me to talk about, please comment below because I would like to know about, you know, what are your questions? And especially if you are about to move there or if you're already living there, or if you live there, and what was your experience? How, how do you feel the country? Because I know it's completely different for everyone. Uh, well, for now, I say goodbye and I hope you had a great time with this video and remember follow me on my social media so you, you will know more about what am I, what am I doing right now. So take care and bye bye.